Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a beautiful game to share with you that was played in 1994 between Garry Kasparov on the white end and Vladimir Kramnik. The final tactical sequence in this game by Kasparov is really something special. The graph I share at the end is going to have an issue. At one point it thinks that it's an even position when in reality white is completely winning. The engine, in short, is experiencing a horizon effect or a horizon problem. There is some depth to this combination, as you will see. All right, we open with a Sicilian, and eventually we will hit at an open Sicilian Zveshnikov. How do we get there? By an uncommon move order, knight G to E2, instead of the far more frequent knight F3. The main thing I see with this is that the F pawn is free to advance. This move, this variation has a name. It's noted as the chameleon variation. Why is that the term used? I believe it's because white could still change course, depending on what black plays here. Could maybe take it into closed Sicilian territory. For instance, if black on move three goes with d6, maybe this is where white could think a bit more about the closed Sicilian with g3, bishop g2. The f-pawn is ready to go in these lines. In this game, though, black continues with knight f6, prepping d5, which would be an excellent reply to g3. White says, fine, I'm going to hit it and hit in the center first. In comes d4, and by transposition, here we are. Whether the knight is capturing on d4 from e2, f3, same story. Same position. e5 now hits Zveshnikov Sicilian. The knight has to do something. Two holes are created in black's camp with this advance. And if you want to be a friend to your opponent, go ahead and take this knight. And in that way, you've helped repair d5. No friends. In this game, knight d to b5, eyeing up d6, that's cut out. Bishop g5, pinning the knight. What do you do when you're in a pin? Challenge the pinning piece, break the pin. Both would be terrible moves. Black is in an only move situation here, has to play a6, has to address this guy. If you play h6 or bishop e7, Capturing the knight is a perfect continuation, and white is ready to pounce in the center on d5 and maybe even land a fork shortly thereafter. So, knight has to be kicked. In the game, knight a3 is played. If bishop takes knight, black must recapture with the pawn. Taking with the queen, gets hit with knight d5, tempo against the queen, and then knight c7. All right, in this game, knight a3, we follow this main line. This move cuts out knight c4 and even threatens to fork the knights. Knight d5, bishop e7, only now do we have black breaking the pin with bishop e7. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. That was white's good bishop that was exchanged for the knight. And you should have a good reason to exchange your good bishop for a knight. What is white's good reason? I get to maintain this knight in the center on an outpost square. All right, from here, c3. White could go with c3 or c4. In both cases, c2 is now vacant for this knight to get back in the ball game. c4 is more aggressive. There's a threat on b5, but at the same time, it's more weakening. d4 would be a hole. So white says... Let me open up this square for the knight and restrict your knight. All right, from here, castles, knight c2, rook b8. This isn't considered best. What's considered best is bishop g5. Um, why is black playing rook to b8? It's anticipating this thematic pawn break, a4. Black is saying if you play a4 here... I can take, and if you take back, I take the b-pawn. Okay. 
in this game, after rook to b8, we have h4. So this is no longer available to black. Now, what if the bishop did play to g5 here instead of rook to b8? And then white went with a4. How can black reply to this? By capturing. And after the recapture, there's still a, you know, white, excuse me, black has a pick from here. a5 is one option. Another one, it's suggesting to throw the king in the corner, get off of this diagonal, and get ready to break in the center with f5. So there's still many ways to play it from here. In this game, after rook to b8, we have h4. There is no bishop g5, and there certainly is no bishop takes pawn because black would be losing after queen h5. Can't move the bishop. You're going to get hit with mate. If you're defending like that, cannot be maintained. White is winning. This is a poison pawn. And this advance is clogging things up for black. Black now challenges this knight. He goes to e7. I should note also uh, a reason to want to put this bishop in this position right here, a reason to put this bishop on g5 instead of rook to b8. Very often this knight will like to pivot on e3 to reinforce the strong knight on d5, and in many cases black is prepared to give up his bad bishop for the knight, just to eliminate a a possible piece that could be a great pest to black on the d5 square. All right. In this game, though, it is rook b8. Black is not given a second chance to get on this diagonal. Knight e7. Black knows what he's signing up for with this. He knows that the king side could be broken up. That's what happens in this game. Knight takes bishop. What is black expecting to get in return? A central pawn break. Black has a slight lead in development. After bishop to b7, two things are happening. e4 is under fire and d5 is prepped. d5 basically cannot be stopped. Bishop d3 defends e4. In comes d5. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Rooks are connected for black. Queen hitting the pawn here. Queenside castles. This is now poison for sure. That would be a pin and win of the queen. But after queenside castles, this one is up for grabs. Black could take it, but says, you know what? I don't like the fact that this bishop is staring right at a square right next to my king. Go away. e4 first, and only after the bishop falls back do we have black grab the a pawn. Now, entering an endgame for black, terrible idea going for this. Why is this bad? Well, I think nearly everything tips in white's favor in this ending. The first thing is the superior structure for white, completely healthy. Uh, control over this file, a great outpost for the knight, a king that is much closer to the center, playing this active role in the end game now. Better bishop. Okay. I think that's a long enough list to keep one away from exchanging queens, bringing this to an end game position. In this game, queen takes a. It's a pawn grab. Still an evenish position. There's no follow up threatening move by black. This knight is quite the piece from c2. Watches out for uh, watches out against queen a4 check. Stops pawn break b4. This is a great square for a knight on e3 or even d4. It's ready to spring into action in just a blink. All right, from here, queen h6. Strong post for the queen. Hitting f6. Queen comes back towards the center, defending f6. Knight d4. Queen b6. Not many options there. She has to still stay trained on f6. Still around an evenish position. Rook h3. Do you see the idea? Rook h3, rook lift. You can't really stop rook g3 next, so the king basically needs to hide. Get out of the 
get off of the G file so that these rooks could get there. All right, from here, this is where I took something away from this game, right around this point here, because you would think, you know, if you said A, in other words, if you said A, rook H3, you say B. You put this rook on the G file, but the rook doesn't go to the G file in this position. If the rook goes to G3 right now, it's easily offset. The rook goes to G8, and basically we're just helping out this rook uh, that was on the B8 square doing nothing. And black is all of a sudden one generating a threat. What does white come up with? Well, he goes with bishop to g4. What is the idea behind bishop to g4? He's trying to improve his queen. As odd as that may sound, uh, white is focused on an intersection square in black's camp. White is coordinating with this bishop g4 move. White is coordinating with the knight on d4. These are two interesting squares all of a sudden. What is a better square for the white queen? Instead of h6, where would she like to be? f6. After rook g8, we have on board knight e6. This is cutting off the queen from defending f6. This is considered a mistake by Kasparov. And I'm really glad he made this mistake because we wouldn't have gotten to see this beautiful sequence that is about to happen. Um, first of all, what is considered best in the computer's eyes is to play bishop f5, pinpointing h7, knight takes, knight takes, queen e6, considers it an even position. In this game, though, Knight e6. Now, what goes into this move? What sort of calculation is necessary before you could pull this move off? What do you need to know? Well, you need to know what to do in case of pawn takes knight. You need to know what to do in case of rook takes bishop. Let's have a look at both. Now, in the game, black replies in the best way. He goes with rook g6. But what's happening in the case of pawn takes knight? Well, white would continue with queen takes f6 check. Black must play rook g7. That's the only move. Black has to go into this pin. And then rook d7. And black is all pinned up. Rook is pinned. Knight is pinned. And how do you get out of this situation? You can't. How do you defend the knight? Queen c5 and rook to e8. They defend the knight, but they could both be met with rook g3, and next up there's bishop takes pawn, and this is collapsing. So there's no, for instance, let me just put it on. Queen here, rook here. What are you doing about bishop takes pawn and then queen takes rook? The bishop from e6 would also be attacking a rook if this guy slides over to try and defend g7. So there's no good continuation here for black if you take the knight after chop rook d7. What about rook takes bishop? Pop quiz. There's only one winning move here for white. Can you spot it? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. There's a pin in the position where we're really close to having a pin, a direct pin in the position. What is that pin exactly? Where is there an unprotected piece? These are red flags for you. Here's the pin. Knight g5. This queen is unprotected. This guy is pinned. There is no pawn takes knight. <laughs> and what are you doing about queen takes pawn? Rook takes knight, you would take here. What are you doing about queen takes pawn? This is completely winning for white. Very attentive to this pin along the sixth rank, which was there ever since move 21. Ever since the knight went to d4, and as soon as the queen went to b6, there was a pin present. 
Okay, it's been lingering there for a bit. Easy to miss. All right, so we have a good response in these two cases. Pawn takes knight, rook takes bishop. In this game, best move played, rook g6. White gets out of danger, also hits the rook. This is where black goes wrong. The best move here is to play bishop d5, try and get rid of this knight. And it says best is to withdraw the knight. This move puts pressure on the knight, also defends the rook. Okay, what is black's move in this game? Rook to e8. Okay, white is now winning. Rook to d6, the computer doesn't yet appreciate with the graph. When I, when I share this, rook d6 still considers this even. It's not even. White is winning. The move played in the game, knight to d5. What else is there? The queen is attacked. If she moves away, white has a very good continuation. Let's see the move in the game, knight d5. Only one winning continuation for white. Can you spot it? Feel free to pause the video and give this one a think or two. Okay. The winning move is h5. <laughs> so this is the start of this beautiful combination by Kasparov. Uh, well, I would, I, I would go step back. It, it really kicks off with rook to d6. He has to know that after rook d6, knight d5, he has this in his back pocket h5. So first of all, if you don't go with h5, let's say if you take the queen, this is considered an evenish end game right around here. Okay. In this game, h5, white is winning. Why is this? Well, let's see. Knight takes queen and pawn takes rook. Two things are happening. You ready? What are the two main things? One, the black queen is attacked, and two, white is threatening two queen. So this is a threat. Rook takes pawn. This plays out in the game. Queen takes rook. Rook takes on h2 check. King g8, only move. Pawn takes pawn, check, fork. King takes rook, and now at the end of all this, the rook is captured back, the material is restored, and the queen is back on the scene. And in the end, look at these aggressive minor pieces compared to these two. White is far better coordinated than black here. This is completely winning. Let me go back and simply show that combination again because it's that good. <laughs> H5, knight takes queen, pawn takes rook, queen takes rook, check, check, promotion, queen back on the scene. We go from here, knight takes knight. Bishop check, only one move, otherwise you're going to get mated. King h6, queen g6 is mate. No taking the knight just yet. White wants to take the f6 pawn with check and is guaranteed to get that after the queen goes here. Doesn't matter where you go next. Queen takes f6, is hitting with check. King f8, queen takes f6. King e8, bishop takes knight. After the smoke has cleared, it is now white who is up a pawn, and this is completely winning. Even if we get into a queen exchange, a bishop endgame alone position, in other words, white is completely winning. This ends suddenly in this one, though, after queen f8, one final move, and that is this deflection tactic. Bishop d7, black resigns. There's only one move, king takes bishop, and then you would lose your queen. So what do you think of this one? <laughs> this is really a beautiful, beautiful combination. Again, one that the computer uh, did not appreciate. Rook d6, it was still thinking it was even. It was not even. White was already winning at that point. Anyhow, feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.